How do you go from being virtually unknown to having access to some of the biggest named celebrities, athletes, thought leaders that exist? To be able to interview the likes of Tony Hawk, Russell Brand, Shaquille O'Neal. If you don't know how to grow your network, if you don't know how to connect with high level influencers, well, you're going to find out how to do it today. Let's check it out. What is going on everybody? So today we're gonna to talk about connecting, specifically connecting with high level influencers, potential mentors, thought leaders. One of the things that has contributed to my success over the years is to be able to build a solid network. And I built this network by offering value first. How could I help them? What is something that I could do for them that's going to help with their progress, whatever they're trying to accomplish? And that's just one of those things that I continually do, trying to support others. But. I'm not the greatest at showcasing some of these connection tips, so I wanted to bring in an expert that's going to help you out. So who did, am I bringing on? Who is this special guest? So this guest is Jordan Harbinger. You may know him from the Arts of Charm podcast, which has been one of iTunes' uh, top-rated podcasts for a long time. Well, he has his own show now. It's called The Jordan Harbinger Show. And one thing I've been really impressed with Jordan is that his ability to connect with some big, big names. I mean, when I see guests that were on his podcast, I'm just like, how, Jordan, how did you get, how did you get these people on your podcast? I mean, it just is quite amazing that he's been able to connect with some amazing people. So I shared some of these names in the beginning, but some of the names I hadn't mentioned yet were Adam Carolla, Simon Sinek, Tim Ferriss, General Stanley McChrystal. I mean, from entrepreneurs, athletes, celebrities. I mean, he's just been able to connect. You know, he shared the stage with Adam Carolla. He's been on the Adam Carolla podcast because Jordan has a lot of great information and a lot of value to add. And that's why I knew that this would be a great addition to this channel. So I hope that you enjoy Jordan's tips on how you can connect with anybody without looking like a douche. So we're gonna find out what Jordan has to say right now. All right, Jordan, first question. Now you started a podcast over 12 years ago when nobody even knew what a podcast was, I guess except for you. Now your podcast averages over 3.8 million downloads per month. I've gotta know, why did you choose podcasting over any other thing out there? Blogging, YouTube, why podcasting? Hey, Jordan Harbinger here from The Jordan Harbinger Show. Yeah, I started a podcast almost 12 years ago that now my voice is heard millions of times each month, which is kind of cool. Why podcasting? Honestly, I don't think it's a great medium for business. I don't think it's a great medium for making money. Nothing like that. The reason I chose podcasting was because I was having conversations with friends of mine, I was having conversations that I thought were really interesting and other people thought were really interesting. People would join these conversations all the time and I thought we should record these because we're teaching the same verbal and nonverbal communication skills all the time. So I wanted to record those and I started burning them to CDs and handing out the CDs, which was pretty inefficient and a hard way to get things spread around. So I started leaving the CDs in stacks and bars and in the library and things like that and people would take them, but very few people would go, oh, I'm gonna sit there and play all of this. So podcasting, I researched and found, was a great way to disseminate essentially just an MP3 file of a conversation across the world. And that was the beginning of the Jordan Harbinger Show. Awesome. All right, so you've been able to interview some amazing A-list guests. You've interviewed people like Shaquille O'Neal, Tony Hawk, Russell Brand, and military leader General Stanley McChrystal. How in the world have you landed these A-list celebrities on your podcast? I network my buns off. I make and create relationships with great people all of the time. And I'm gonna give you a couple tricks here. The first thing is I'm always introducing people to each other inside my network. And I always ask each side permission first. So I'll say, hey, CPA accountant guy, I know this cryptocurrency expert who has a lot of investors that he works with, they're all gonna need to pay taxes at some point. In theory, maybe you can help them find the right type of advice. I'm doing that every day, I do that all day, I engage and re-engage people, and every morning when I wake up, 
I open up my phone, I scroll all the way down to the bottom of my text list, and I find the people that I haven't talked to in months or even years, and I send them a little message along the lines of, hey, it's been a long time, Jordan Harbinger here, you may or may not have my number in your phone still, I haven't spoken with you in a long time, but I'm curious what you're up to, what's the latest with you, no rush on the response, hope to hear from you soon. Now, I do that maybe four or five times a day, which keeps everybody in my contact list really refreshed, really, really active, and I'm always able to reach out and ask or to offer, more importantly, offer help to other people. That leads to people asking what they can do for me, and I often say, I'm looking for great personalities to interview on my show, who's the most interesting person you know, and inevitably, I end up with Tony Hawk, Russell Brand, Stanley McChrystal, and Shaquille O'Neal. That's just the way it's been. I mean, it's taken years, um, but I do teach networking, bear that in mind. I teach networking and relationship development, and if you go to advancedhumandynamics.com, I have drills like the texting thing, like the introduction drill, complete with scripts, and I have dozens of them and they're for free at advancedhumandynamics.com so you can start doing this stuff yourself those are some great tips so i have to ask you this when you're in, in the midst of interviewing some of these a-list celebrities some of these big names do you ever have to pinch yourself and just kind of say to yourself or ask yourself how in the world did i get in this position like what have i done to be able to interview some of these amazing people well, I mean, by the time I've done my eight to 10 hours of show prep, which I do for every single show, I'm not really that nervous anymore. I know everything about them. Uh, I know them better than most of their friends know them. So it's just like I'm having a conversation with a friend, even though they're meeting me for the first time, I know so much about them that I'm really not nervous anymore. Sometimes, yeah, I've got to pinch myself and answer the question, who am I? Why do I have done to done be in this room but I feel like I've put in the work over the last 10 11 years and by any account of metrics you know the show is a worthwhile place for any celebrity or non-celebrity for that matter to be and to have a discussion you know I'm and I'm not getting any smaller and my show's not making any, any smaller footprint anytime soon. My mission is to be one of the best interviewers in the world, and so it's worthwhile for them to be there, and I feel like I have my seat at the table, and that, frankly, I deserve it. Okay, so I have to assume, when you initially were trying to make contact with some of these bigger names, some of these high-profile guests, that it all didn't work out. Was there ever a time when you were trying to get somebody on the show where it just didn't work, that you just had a complete flop? There are times where I've connected with people and it has flopped. Um, I'm not sure that I have any sort of interesting story to go along with this. I think most of the time you end up with people who just don't reply, they're too busy, something like that, or your communication's just not going through. I will tell you that I tried to get an interview with somebody who it turned out had passed away. That was pretty embarrassing. I remember talking with the publicist and saying, what's the deal? How come you won't connect me with so-and-so? And she replied, very bluntly, well, he died last year. And I thought, that's as good of an excuse as any, really, to not make that introduction. Now, that is a great story. All right, so there are many people that want to connect with potential mentors or successful thought leaders in their space or niche. What is your number one tip for them and how they can connect with some of these people? Now, I know that many people would love to network with potential mentors or successful thought leaders in their space. Um, I think one of the number one steps you can take towards making that connection is figuring out how you can add value to that person. I know that sounds vague and nebulous, but it doesn't have to. You have to figure out the types of things that person is interested in professionally, what they're interested in personally, and you can send them articles that make sense, especially you can send them introductions to other people that they know or, th or that they should know sorry that they should know don't introduce them to people they already know that actually you can handle and you can figure out who they already know using the double opt-in introduction trick that i will also have at advanced human dynamics and one of the free drills there so if you're adding value you're adding those networking connections and you're adding people to their network you will eventually connect quite well with thought leaders in that space potential mentors etc it's a really easy path yeah Yes, I love some of those tips. I love some of those strategies. Okay, so what do you typically see is the number one mistake that people are making when they're trying to make that connection? Honestly, people asking what's in it for them or trying to do something transactional or quid pro quo. So 
I am a huge fan of ABG, always be generous, always be giving, instead of ABC, always be closing. So when people try to do ABC, they say things like, hey, Jordan, I noticed some typos and flaws on your website. And I go, oh, great, thanks for the feedback. And they go, yeah, sure, no problem. If you want me to consult for you, it's $400 an hour. And I'm like, oh, uh, no, not interested, thanks anyway. And then I automatically write that person off as somebody who's just trying to sell me. They're a taker. My walls go up. They're, they're pretty much done. I notice a lot of people doing this. I, I actually, you know what? Here's another mistake. Not digging the well before you're thirsty. A lot of people think, I'm going to network later. I'm going to create relationships later on down the line. This is the same as putting a spare tire in the trunk of your car. If you put it in, or if you want to put it in after you got a flat, you're too freaking late. You have to put it in beforehand. You have to dig the well before you're thirsty. If somebody came to you and needed help and you'd never talked with them in your life, you'd probably blow them off because you're getting asked for things from people all the time. If somebody who's talked with you for the last three years and never asked anything of you asked you for a quick favor or a not so quick favor, there's a much higher chance that you would say yes. That's a common mistake, not digging the well before you're thirsty. Okay, we all have our pet peeves. One of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody contacts me with the subject heading of, can I pick your brain? Or I would like to pick your brain. That's just something that drives me crazy. What is your biggest pet peeve when people are trying to connect with you? My biggest pet peeve when people are trying to connect with me is when people act like they're entitled to my time. What I mean by this is people who follow up in with just rapid succession. I, look, if you haven't heard from me in a week or two, go ahead, follow up, makes sense. If you haven't heard from me in two days, sending me these constant follow-ups or like still waiting to hear from you with a grumpy face, that just means that you're entitled, or shows me that you think you're entitled to my time. I hate that. I never treat other people like that. I am patient, you should be patient. In fact, when people do that, I use this program called Boomerang for Gmail. I will snooze their email for a month or at least two weeks because I don't wanna train people that the more annoying they are, the more aggressive they are, the quicker I respond. I wanna train the opposite behavior, that the more aggressive and annoying they are, either they get no response at all or it takes a long time to hear from me. This has a couple of really great results. First of all, people stop following up aggressively, they know it takes me a while, or really entitled people, they get fed up and they never email me again, which is exactly the way I like it. Yes, I get those emails too. And initially you're like, oh wow, they're doing something nice. But the reality, they're just trying to pitch you something, which I got no problem with that, but why don't you wait until we have some sort of relationship, build that rapport first, before you try to pitch me. It just feels very, ugh, very icky. All right, what is one last connection tip or tips you have for our audience? As for last connection tips, I've got dozens of drills like the text re-engagement, the digging the well before you're thirsty, the re-engagement and the ABG type of things. I have a lot of drills and exercises like this that I will take you through for free if you go to advancedhumandynamics.com, you click on level one at advancedhumandynamics.com, that's where you'll find a bunch of these drills that'll take you through that'll help you really great, really great drills that will help you create relationships, keep people engaged in your network, reach upward and outward to people in your circles, introduce them to each other, etc. And of course, I'd love it if people would listen to The Jordan Harbinger Show, available on Spotify or any podcast app. The Jordan Harbinger Show is all you need to search for, or you can find it at jordanharbinger.com. Look, I really hope this was helpful for everyone. You can email me, jordan at jordanharbinger.com. And I'm on social media, namely Instagram and Twitter, at Jordan Harbinger. Feel free to reach out to me there as well. Thanks, everybody. And thank you for the opportunity, Jeff. Jordan, thanks so much for stopping by and sharing some of your networking skills. I just love all these tips that you had to share. But to our readers, to you, what was your biggest takeaway from Jordan? What did you learn from how he's been able to network and connect with some high list celebrities? And there's dozens and dozens of names that I didn't get a chance to mention yet, but you can check that out when you go to the Jordan Harbinger Show. So be sure to check out his podcast because not only does he have some great tips, but he has some high level guests that are going to improve your life some way, somehow. So be able to check that out. All right, GFC community, I hope that you enjoyed this latest video and you know the drill. If you like it, if you like Jordan, why don't you show him some appreciation, give him a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, come on, get to it. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so when you know, so you know that I know that you know 
that the last video is coming your way. All right, this is GFC. I'm not GFC, I'm Jeff Rose, reminding you that it's your money, your life, and only you can make it awesome. And see you next time. That's a good warm up. The real deal right here. When new one, that wasn't the real deal. That was close to being the real deal, but this is the real deal. Take two, mm -hmm. take three, almost, almost. Time, take four or five. That's the winner right there. That's the winner.